Okay. So before we really get going, one last thing. I want you to remember and keep in mind what our essential question, our critical literacy question is, which is why do we make art? Okay, keep it in mind. Here we go. One of the most important questions we can ask is how we came to recognize ourselves. This is not the same as asking when we first saw our image reflected in still water, or how we learn to react selfishly to pain and, and fear. Uh, it is not merely self-awareness we are after, but the awareness of oneself as oneself. The awareness of I, apart from the material continuum of the natural world, and without any other quality attached to it. So, basically what they're saying there is you become aware of yourself as I, me. It's pretty funny because we take that for granted, but there aren't that many animals that can do that. An example that I'm going to use is my text to text, so text to something else. And that is, you've all seen those videos on YouTube of like kittens and puppies or full blown cats and dogs who see themselves in a mirror and then go bonkers. They can't handle what's in the mirror. They're really hesitant about it. They might attack it. They might try to play with it. They, they, they look, try to look behind the mirror because they don't understand that what they're seeing is their reflection and their reflection is themselves because they can't do that. They can't recognize me. I. That kind of awareness happens in elephants, in dolphins, in whales, and I think pigs, and orangutans too, which are, you know, we're pretty similar in that range. All of these animals have the characteristic of have really, having really big brains, and they are very rare the sense of, of I is existing. It's pretty cool. So, continuing it. Uh, so many uniquely human technological achievements, the, the fish hook, fire, cutting edges, even basic seafaring. So, it's getting in the boat on the sea. Uh, the results of millennia of trials and errors, and truly, it has been millennia of trials and errors and learning. So, don't forget the cool stuff that the ancients learned before you, because you're just stealing their knowledge. Uh, but they all seem possible without having to, or the recourse to I, or having to reference back to, to me, I. Uh, but identity, philosophy, poetry, psychoanalysis, and other foundations of classical and modern life are predicated or dependent on a language of introspection, or this ability to talk about me and what's going on with me, the individual, and recognizing yourself. Okay, the answer to this question will involve changes in human anatomy and semiotic environment. Ooh, we've hit our first vocab word. Fun, fun, fun. So, I'm going to pull that up. There we go. I had this open in a previous video, but the computer deleted it. Shame on the computer. So this is one of our tier three words, big kahunas here. And so semiotics is the study of meaning making, the philosophical theory of signs and symbols. So for an example of that, I'm going to use a personal experience. So when you're a baby and you're just figuring things out and you're getting fed and taken care of and you're still, you know, super gross but living the life, um, you're getting fed things like applesauce. When I was a baby, I loved applesauce. I was all about that. 
But as you get older, you you get to start chewing things. You get some sweet teeth. And so now you need, you want an apple. Well, how do you tell someone that you want an apple? Well, first you need to know what an apple looks like. But then how do you describe that apple? Oh, well, you could, if you don't know the word for apple, you can't. Well, maybe you would try to describe the apple by what it looks like or what it tastes like. But what if you don't have a word for red or a word for crunchy or sweet uh, or round or shape? Those are symbols. And so words are placeholders. They're symbols in our brain that represent a thing or an idea or a concept. And that is what semiotics is. And so a lot of art is really semiotics. And it's this process of meaning making. And we just take it to the next level. So there you go. Nice little lesson there. So uh, there are also changes in human, human anatomy. So getting sweet hands and big old brains. Uh, but unfortunately, evidence of these things remains scarce because, you know, 40,000 years will do that. Representation of the self and the world in art would seem to qualify as exploratory self-recognition and even self-reflection. Uh, especially if we remember that art has never been inextricably linked to the concept of audience. So for your, an example for you, I suppose, would be, say you're taking a test and or say you're in class and you need to take notes and you're bored out of your mind. Maybe it's the teacher's fault, maybe it's your fault, maybe it's the subject matter's fault. Whatever it is, you start doodling in the corner of your paper. Now, is that for anyone? Are you sitting there going like, yes, when this test is over, I will sell this and make millions. No, you're drawing that for you. So, not all art is intended to be for other people to look at. Uh, a lot of art therapy, which is a profession you can go into and get art degrees, um, is considered really important for a lot of people for dealing with personal issues and, and developing your sense of self and developing all sorts of great things. So that's important to know. But uh, the idea was that maybe this art would represent humans trying to do that, trying to figure things out through drawing. It isn't necessarily true. We're not sure. Um, the paleo upper Paleolithic cave frescoes, such as Lascaux and Trovet, which are the two big kahunas in uh, France, and they are the oldest at about 40,000 years old. Uh, along with early Venus figurines, which are chubby little sculptures of ladies uh, that proved back then when food is scarce, having a little extra something something on ya is super sexy. Uh, but they are cited as mileposts in the ripening of unique human mental faculties. So little signposts for saying, hey, we're getting somewhere here. Uh, the coordination of manual dexterity ability to use your hands here really carefully, like chopsticks. Gosh, those are hard. Uh, and the ability to depict the world as iconography rather than intentionally variable notations becomes highly visible on the walls of Upper Paleolithic caves. So depict the world as iconography, uh, create images that uh, represent something in reality. So taking the concrete things in the world and representing them somewhere else. Okay, I'm gonna stop the thing real fast. I'm gonna go back right in a sec.